there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? Is there anybody out there? One of the world's most senior financial leaders has warned of the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression of the 1930s. The head of the International Monetary Fund made the ominous prediction as he met with other economic ministers to discuss ways of combating the problem. Now they're pointing the finger at the slowdown in the US economy, higher inflation and volatile financial markets. The main problem confronting the world's central bankers and economic ministers as they arrived at the IMF was the international financial crisis. The latest IMF forecast is for a recession in the United States. The U.S. Federal Reserve, led by Ben Bernanke, is leading the response to that risk. There's a clear recognition among all the financial officials gathered here in Washington that there's a danger of it getting worse and spreading. The discussion on global economy and financial markets uh, reflects uh, what uh, is the mood in this moment, uh, the sense that the uh, chain of bad news may not uh, uh, have come to an end. After the discussions, the ministers said that banks should be open about losses they've made on financial assets linked to problem loans. They also called for stronger government supervision of the financial industry. Homeowners, it seems as if their mortgages have gone sky high. And according to the Chancellor, there's no sign yet of the pressure on our pockets easing. Make no mistake, this is a very, very difficult situation. These are very uncertain times and we haven't seen a shock like this for decades. A shock like this for decades. A shock like this for decades. Alistair Darling wants the banks to help some of the homeowners who may be having trouble with their payments by reducing their lending rates following the Bank of England's cut last week. We want to see that pass through so it helps homeowners. And of course we're talking to the mortgage lenders about helping people who might get into difficulties. Some lenders have pushed rates down, but some are still raising the cost of borrowing. But lenders say the rate cut doesn't make much of a dent in the problem at the foundation of the credit squeeze. Customers want to borrow more money than the banks can lay their hands on. Energy bills could rise again after the owners of British Gas said wholesale prices have doubled in the last year. The energy company Centrica says it'll try to deliver what it calls reasonable margins in its retail business. British Gas put prices up by 15% in January. Most of us have already seen our energy bills go up this year. 
but switching on looks set to become even more expensive. The company which owns Britain's biggest domestic supplier, British Gas, says its profits are being hit as the cost of oil soars. Centrica's blaming wholesale energy prices. It says the cost of gas has risen by 92% over the last year, and the wholesale price of electricity has doubled. British Gas and other major energy suppliers put prices up by around 15% in January. But it seems it wasn't enough. The cost of oil has hit a record high, squeezing profits even further. Again, customers are likely to bear the brunt. The companies themselves and the, all the producers say there's plenty of gas around. At this time of year, demand falls quite low. We should see prices falling hugely, and they're not. It's time that um, the Financial Services Authority, Ofgem, and the European Commission got to the bottom of all of the mystery about formation of these prices. Despite an increase in January, experts predict another rise of up to 46% by the end of the year. That would push the average energy bill to more than £1,300, and it would leave households paying double what they were in 2005 the sky-high price of gasoline. It's closing in on $4 a gallon. In some parts of the country, it's already arrived. The nationwide average is $3.58. Over the past five weeks, it's been rising a penny a day. And from the West Coast, where our Ben Tracy is based, to the Midwest and Cynthia Bowers, to the East Coast, where Jeff Lohr is standing by, those, those pennies are adding up to big bucks and forcing drivers to make some big-time adjustments. We'll begin here in the east, and Jeff, the speed of the price hikes is really stunning. Yeah, it is, Katie. Prices at this New Jersey station went up 22 cents just today to 3.39 a gallon. Hard to believe that's still some of the cheapest gas in the country. The rapid rise put the issue at the top of everyone's agenda today. Why all the fuss right now? There's often a spike at the pump in the spring. This time, though, it's extreme. The average fill-up eight bucks more than it was last year. We don't go out to dinner. We buy gas instead. We watched as one trucker spent a whopping $534. So when's the relief coming? One thing you can count on is when you hear most about oil prices and high prices and the forecasts, that's usually a sign that we're near the end. And Cynthia, the high prices are hurting not only the poor, but organizations trying to help the poor as well, right? They certainly are, Katie. When you consider that gas here is now topping four bucks a gallon, it costs 200 to fill up one of these. Imagine trying to fill 28 of them. That's what folks at this food bank, which help feed Chicago's hungry, have to do every day. And we've got a fleet of vehicles that go and pick up food donations and deliver food. Our fuel prices have gone up 42 percent in our organization this year. 42 percent translates to $40,000 more paid at the pump this year than last. To bridge the gap, they're begging donors to give more. Every spring, when refiners make the switch from winter to summer fuels, gas prices shoot up. In the past, refiners got the blame. And they weren't easy targets last April, when they were making about 25 bucks a barrel. But record oil prices and lower demand for gas have cut their margin now to about six bucks a barrel. High fuel and food costs are big reasons why 6,000 more people are showing up every week at the Chicago area food pantry's Cape Mayer supplies. How hard does that make things when you're on the front line? I gotta tell you, every day we gotta pull a rabbit out of a hat. 40,000 more for gas, Katie. That's money they could use to be to buy 30 tons of food. Yeah, this pump in Los Angeles, we're talking 389 for a gallon of regular unleaded. If you need premium, 413. That's 54 cents more than it was this time last year. And all of this has people in car-centric LA considering a very radical idea: public transportation. Despite the headaches, many in L.A. view driving as a virtue, one now caught in the gas price vice. That's pumped up ridership on the rails here by 700,000 passengers since last year. Commuters like Derek Simpson, a lawyer, ditching their cars for the train. And if I drove into work, I'd have to fill up my car probably every five days, but when I take the train, I can probably go two or three weeks without having to fill it up. In 2001, households with cars spent an average of $1,600 on gas. This year, if we don't cut back, drivers will spend an estimated $3,800 
just to keep the tank full.